It's time for another pre-race review. Hello, my name is Alex Does F1 Stuff and welcome back to a pre-race review for round number four in Great Britain around Silverstone. That didn't quite make sense, but it'll do. So it is round number four, Silverstone, Great Britain, Double header coming up, next race, 70th anniversary, also around Silverstone. Let's just take a look at where the championships have left off. I've got some nice little graphs here. Uh, Hamilton, clearly at the top in front of Bottas. And then there's about a light year's gap uh, to Verstappen down in P3. Then you've got Norris, still going strong. Unfortunately, has had a no points in Hungary. Bit of a horizontal there, same with Leclerc as well, you can see. And then there's just a jumble mess at the bottom and it's a very similar story in the constructors mercedes a light year in front more than double the points of red bull mclaren just one point in front of um racing point courtesy of the Haas penalty the stupid Haas penalty which cost them one point uh giving another point to signs ferrari fifth not ideal renault just above with alfa tori uh, then Alfa Romeo, Haas and Williams all at the bottom. Anyway, we will go back to Silverstone. Cracking, cracking track Silverstone, a brilliant track. 52 laps, 5.891 kilometers of solid, solid racing. Last year we had Leclerc versus Verstappen. Not all the race, but some very good racing during it. We then had Hamilton and Bottas for the lead. That was some amazing racing in the opening few laps. And then obviously last year, the crash, Vettel and Verstappen, that was a good race. Last year was a great race. And then also, 2013, every single one of the tyre blowouts. I think there were like six, I've only got pictures of four of them, but that was a great race as well. Nico Rosberg ended up winning. I didn't even know that until I researched for this video. And let's not forget, 2003, man on the track. What an idiot. What an idiot, 2003, a long old time ago, 17 years ago, Jesus Christ. And also, uh, 1987, Nigel Mansell, I don't have a picture of this as they were really obviously grainy and just they weren't particularly good photos in the slightest. But 1987, Nigel Mansell getting past PK, lots of lefts and rights and lefts and rights and down the inside and it was amazing, the track invasions were just ridiculous. That was a proper classic race. But forgetting all of the past, we don't need the past today. We are on about the the present. Yes, the present. Why did I forget that word? So it is looking mightily strong for the Mercedes pair. A solid, solid start to the season. 91% of the points scored so far. Five out of six podiums, three wins and three pole positions. Couldn't really ask for a better start to the season. I mean, look back at 2019. Yes, they did have a better start because they got one twos in the first five races, which hasn't actually happened this year. But still, an incredible start to the season. Expect them to be at the top. They they just will. Whether it'll be a one two, I don't know, because safety cars and race incidents such as race one uh, can come into play and it, it could end up buggering them. But expect them to be at the top once more. Now, Red Bull. Red Bull should have another good race. They need another good race like Hungary. Yes, Hungary was a bit iffy qualifying and single lap pace, but they actually had good race pace because Verstappen fought from P7 to second and Albon, as pictured, came from P5 or P13 or something like that to P5. Absolutely great race pace. They need that this weekend, but they just need a better qualifying and I feel they should be able to get it. But on the topic of Albon, I've literally just, just now I'm recording this on a Tuesday, hopefully to come out on Thursday. I've just uploaded a video on Alex Albon, statistically comparing him to Pierre Gasly, and hopefully it gets well received. I've literally just hit upload on it not two minutes ago. But that's enough little self-promotion. Red Bull should have a decent race today. They should get on the podium. I don't think it'll be Alex Albon though, as he just doesn't seem to have that edge over Verstappen. And if both Mercedes are on the podium, it's going to be Verstappen, not Albon. Anyway, we move to Tracing Point. Racing Point, the pink Mercedes fill in whatever name you want to call it, the looky likey car of the 2019 championship winning Mercedes. They will go well here. The 29 Mercedes, 2019 Mercedes went well here last year. 
so expect the looky likey car to do very well. They will probably, probably out qualify Red Bull. That's my prediction. They will out qualify Red Bull like they did in Hungary. Whether both cars will, ah, that's a bit of a stretch. I reckon one car will at least out qualify Red Bull, and they should be able to get through into Q3 on the medium tyres. I'm expecting Mercedes to do something very similar as well. Uh, and that will set them up well for the race. That will definitely set them up well for the race, but I don't think they have the race pace, they don't have the race craft, and the team doesn't have the race strategy that Red Bull does to run at the front, and they will again falter. Whereas Hungary, it was their podium to lose. Stroll and Perez, P3 and P4, they were miles quicker than everybody else, but they lost the podium. They didn't have the race pace, they didn't have the race craft, and the team didn't have the race strategy to perform at the top like Red Bull and Mercedes does. That is so far Racing Point's downfall. But they should still be well within the top five, I think. This is the trouble with predictions, literally anything can go wrong. But we move to McLaren. McLaren had a bit of an iffy race compared to race one and race two in Austria in Hungary last time out. Uh, outside of the points for one car and then P9 after the Haas penalty for the other. Not where they want to be in the slightest. They want to be with Racing Point. They want to be in that midfield fight, but they just weren't quite there. But saying that, Silverstone is, is in my mind at least, a sort of longer version of Austria. It's got some long straights. It's got it's a bit of more of a power track like Austria was. It's got some fast corners and it's got some slightly slower corners. So in my mind anyway, it's a slightly faster version of Austria or longer version of Austria, sorry. So they should they should go well again here this year. I don't think they'll out qualify Racing Point, but I feel at least one of them will out race the Racing Points because they have the better race Craft, the race pay, uh, race craft is associated to the drivers. It's the race strategy. McLaren have better race strategy than Racing Point. And to Ferrari, they will struggle here. They will struggle. It's got fast corners. It's got long straights. It's everything that is that the Ferrari can't do this year because its power unit has been nerfed, has been made legal. It will not be a strong race for the Scuderia. And that goes for all of the Ferrari powered cars, but I will get onto those a bit later. Um, they'll definitely, I think again, they will struggle to get into Q3. They had both cars in Q3 last time out in Hungary, but this time, no, I don't, I don't think so at all. Um, whereabouts will they finish in the race? The lower reaches of the top 10 and one of them will be outside. And on to Haas, the second of the Ferrari-powered cars. They had a good race in Hungary. Cracking strategy, shit penalty, um, but penalty is a penalty, deserved, still shit, very harsh, but penalty nonetheless. Still points, still points, one point over two points, which is probably why they're not protesting it and being all icy grumpy about it because it's only a point and you're not really going to argue about a point whereas if it was for a victory if if the strategy enabled them to get onto the podium and then they lost it then yeah i suppose you would you would kind of battle that anyway um they will struggle again uh it's just a track that doesn't suit the ferrari power unit this year at all long straights fast corners it's not going to go very well and it's looking like it's sunny as well 25 degrees and rain so far not predicted but this is i am recording this on a tuesday we've obviously got just under a week to go where weather forecasts in the uk especially can easily change in that time but i will expect Haas to definitely struggle but on to the next team alpha tori when i was making this and i've written some notes down i've gone honestly what the hell is that word oh have ha Honestly, have no idea they keep moving about. I find AlphaTauri, at least for me, trying to pinpoint where they're going to be is really, really difficult. Because they they seem to have good races. Oh, whoa, there are Imola in this picture. Oh, that's cool. They must have done their 2020. I didn't know that. I find AlphaTauri really difficult to pin down as to where they're going to be. They seem to just fluctuate a lot. Sometimes they have strong races, sometimes they have bad races. I find it really difficult to pinpoint where they're going to be. 
I think they're going to score some points. I, I think points are definitely on the table for them. But I don't think they're going to get a double points finish. And I don't think they're going to get into Q3 either. And moving to Renault. A team that should... A team that should be in front of all the Ferrari powered cars. It should be. Wow, that airbox is mad. Jesus Christ. Why am I only noticing this now? Anyway, yes. Renault should be in front of all of the Ferrari powered cars. They go okay around Silverstone. Um, but now that the Ferraris are, are, are nerfed is the wrong word because the, the, the Ferrari power unit is now, uh, I don't know how to describe this. The prancing horse has lost a lot of horses in its engine and the Renault should be able to beat that. It should be able to get some decent points. Hopefully I'm predicting a double points finish for Renault. But moving on to Williams. Now, they are expecting a struggle. They have had some incredible Saturday performance, some incredible single lap pace in qualifying, but they have lost it all in the race. They have no race pace whatsoever, and that is something that Russell is trying to keep in check for himself. He's trying not to hype himself up too much because then he'll just get disappointed and annoyed that he hasn't performed at the level that he knows he can. He was, what, P12 in Hungary? An astonishing qualifying, both cars into Q2, and then in the race they were nowhere. So they just need to, they just need to try and build off of that. They need to keep on moving forward, get both cars into Q2 again, keep that momentum up, and then it will start, then they will start to understand, then they can start to improve. But if they start to slip back into both cars being eliminated in Q1, then it will be a struggle. And finally, the team that will struggle the most, Alfa Romeo. They are by far the worst team on the grid. Um, slow in qualifying, slower than the Williams in qualifying, and also the race, they're just, they're just not there. And again, like I said, the Ferrari power unit, this track isn't suited to, so they will struggle the most expect them to unfortunately and annoyingly for Raikkonen especially and I mean Giovinazzi as well they will be at the back it's a shame but it's got someone's got to be there someone's got to be there so that is my little overview for each team as well uh podium Hamilton uh because he always does well at Silverstone it just gives him that extra boost that extra vibe to to be able to beat his teammate um then yes I do think for, for at least Silverstone, Britain, it's going to be Bottas in second. Um, I said it was going to be a, a racing point podium last weekend, or two weekends ago. I uh, I don't want to say it's going to be a racing point, because I think Red Bull are going to beat them, because they've got better race pace. So yes, uh, Mercedes, Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Albon, Perez, that's what, top five... Um, then a Renault, maybe, oh no, a McLaren. Ah, shit, a McLaren might come P5. Oh, this is so difficult. Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Albon, Perez, Sainz, Stroll, Norris, and then P10, and Alpha Tori. How about that? Two McLaren, oh, I forgot about Renault. Oh, sod it. There's the top five. Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, what did I say? Um, Perez. Hamilton. But. Fanaha. Okay, right. Try again. Hamilton. Bottas. Verstappen. That's your podium. Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen. Albon. P4. Perez. P5. That's all I'm doing. I can't. It's too stressful. It's too stressful coming up with the, the top 10. I can't do it. There's too many teams that could get in there. I mean, even Ferrari could genuinely have a good race. They won't because their engine is bad, but Ferrari could have a good race. Who knows? Who knows? That's my top five. Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Albon, Perez. Top five, done, sealed, video done. God, I worked myself up way too much about that. Anyway, that is all I've got for you today, guys, for my pre-race review for Britain. I will, mm, when will the review come out? Monday, after the Grand Prix. I will catch you in the next video with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.